hey welcome back to my channel so we are going to be shifting things a little bit around here I mentioned that in the last few videos but I promise I will get a video put out kind of explaining um, how this channel will be and the new kind of new face um, that it's gotten in the past but this channel will be focusing on three things in the future um, beauty homeschooling and family life education those three things are kind of taking over my life right now and encompassing my life those are the top three things that I'm thinking about and worrying about constantly in the past I was a certified family life educator and I'm currently in my master's program uh, getting a degree in family science but my main focus is providing you guys with resources and education um, in areas that you guys need help so in the future, probably one of the first classes I will be offering is a class on guiding yourself and your young children through loss and grief. And so grief doesn't always have to be um, about the death of someone. It can be, you know, losing a best friend, moving like a best friend moving away or the death of a sibling or a parent or a grandparent. All of those things can be completely traumatic for a child. And in my personal experience, I didn't know how to guide my child through grief. I figured that they were too young. Some of them could, couldn't even speak yet. And I was like, how, if they can't express to me their emotions, how am I supposed to help them? Especially when I am trying to process this whole situation myself and how to be a mom at the same time. And it was incredibly difficult. And I'm thankful for what I know now, and I wish I knew it in the in the past, but we do the best with what we have at that moment. And I didn't have this information, but that's why I'm giving it to you. So this class will be a four session class, um, guiding yourself and your child through grief. I'm gonna go over the titles of all four sessions, but I'm actually gonna give you a little snippet of the fourth session today. And so the first session is understanding and coping with grief yourself because identifying grief and understanding it and edu educating yourself about the grieving process is very important so that you can feel like you have at least some kind of an emotional hold to be able to help your child as well. The second session, we'll be talking about the importance of play during the grief process. Children will act out their emotions during play. Play is just a great resource for your child in general to connect with them, to learn from them, and to see how that they're feeling. And so I really love that session because it gives some great ideas to play with your children at home. But not only that, but things that you can observe and take note of to apply to the last session um, that I'm going to be talking about today. And so session three is actually facilitating conversations with your child around death. And so the fourth session that I'm going to touch on today is recognizing developmental, physical, and emotional cues in your child that show how they are dealing with their grief process and that honestly help them work through it. Even if you don't feel like you are making progress or they are necessarily understanding, hey, I need to work through this grief process. Obviously, they're not going to understand that, but recognizing their cues is incredibly important because it can help you see how they're feeling and how you need to adjust how much you're playing with them or how much attention you're giving them or are they getting enough choices or if they're understanding the situation at all. And so I'm going to touch on that a little bit today. Specifically, I don't want to give away the whole session because like I said, this will be a program available to you guys in the future. But I did want to touch on some of the developmental responses to grief for ages two to four. I personally had two children during this time in my life where um, we struggled with death and grief. When Two and a half years ago, my father died unexpectedly right after we had a huge family vacation, family reunion with him. Um, and if you want to know more about it, here is a video during that time um, my family and I were vlogging. And it kind of just explains what we were going through the, during that time. But at the time, my children were four, two, and one. And so, they were all very young and my four-year-old could honestly barely talk he was he had a lot of speech therapy as a child and so honestly i had almost three children that could not communicate to me they could not tell me their emotions and i don't know if i was ready or capable of helping them through their grief process at the time let alone you know my own grief process 
uh, because it was incredibly unexpected and traumatic and um, I, I did not have enough tools, education, or resources to help my children during that time and I honestly feel like that they suffered during that time and I didn't know and I'm not sure I would have been able to help them at the time anyway. But like I said, I want to focus on developmental responses to grief for two to four year olds. Some of my resources for this program um, come from the Dougie Center. They are a national center. They are a resource for um, grieving children and families. And they have incredibly amazing resources for children and families of all ages too. I was told from a lot of people during that time that maybe my oldest could get services but that most of my younger children there wasn't a lot available to them which is true and there's not a lot you can do and that's because a lot of the work can be done at home by um educating yourself and learning these developmental responses and knowing how to observe them and to respond to them okay so at this developmental stage children do not fully understand death they do not understand that it is permanent and that it is universal and they are most likely to express themselves negatively or positively through behavior and play and so the concept of death, young children, you know, they see it as reversible because most things in their life are reversible. And they start to wonder, you know, if death happens to everyone. And you might hear questions like, oh, my grandpa died. Um, when's he coming back? I know my kids ask that a few times, you know, like when, when's grandpa coming back? Especially because the nature of the way that he died was very confusing for my children because we were on this family vacation and we come home and he was going to meet us at home a few days later and died after we had left him and you know so they always had the expectation of you know like we said goodbye to grandpa and he was coming home and then we would see him in a few days and so i think that that was confusing for them even after they learned that he had died it was like, well, when's he coming home? <laughs> and so obviously children do not understand at this age that death is permanent. And so they do ask a lot of questions because it helps them understand. And I will go on to, to talk about, there's a lot of great resources like Sesame Street and Daniel Tiger have done amazing episodes on how to facilitate conversations with your child and that asking questions are extremely helpful for them but providing them with short honest explanations okay so I wanted to talk about the common responses to grief during this age um, and they might not seem like yeah I mean my kids still experience these things on a daily basis that I don't necessarily think are connected with grief but it, especially immediately after these are important things to note that could happen and that could be telling you that your child is struggling with their emotions and their feelings during this time and it might be a good time to bring up conversations and to um, let them ask questions and so they can have you know general anxiety lots of crying irregular sleep extra clinginess irritability, temper tantrums, repetitive questions, behavior regression. That doesn't necessarily have to mean like, you know, the way that they act, but if they were potty training, you know, they might have setbacks and regressions to certain behaviors that, they, that were already learned for them. And um, another thing could be, you know, telling the story to people, even strangers. I know my kids did that a lot. They were very matter of fact, but they also wanted to talk about it and letting them do so is, is a good thing for them. But a few easy ways to help your children during this time if they are showing these responses to grief are creating a consistent routine to help establish safety and predictability in their lives, especially at bedtime and morning time. Creating consistent routines during those times are very helpful. And secondly, I mentioned this before, is providing short, honest explanations of death and being honest and truthful. Sometimes euphemisms like gone or lost can be confusing to children. Like I said, they're very literal and um, they don't understand. So telling them in ways that they can understand is best. It's best to say, you know, grandpa died, his heart stopped working. And you don't have to go into details or anything. Like I said, short, honest explanations are best for children. Also setting limits and uh, being flexible when needed. 
providing lots of opportunities for play like I said there's a whole session on play and um, helping your child through that and also giving choices whenever possible letting them kind of be in control of their outfits you can you know would you like to wear this outfit today or this outfit or would you like the blue bowl or the orange bowl um, and overall most importantly lots of physical and emotional nurturance for me during this time I wanted to be alone <laughs> I wanted to cry alone in my room all day long and I wasn't there to help my children through that but my husband was home and he was able to you know love on my children and play with them um, and so you know it might be someone else in your family that can help with that um, but you know just loving on your children and providing them with so much physical and emotional nurturance is incredibly important during this time and so that's it for now I just wanted to give you guys a little snippet of that program and something that you can use right now I think that just noticing those developmental responses were incredibly helpful for me and something that I know that I wish I had at the time um, of my father's death when we were all going through our grieving process but it's important to know now and I'm glad I can be educated about it and help you guys and so please let me know if you guys are going through this or if you have any questions about your children during this process I would love to provide you with tools and resources to help you and yeah I'm so thankful for you guys and it's hard to make a video like this you know because I'm like I hope people don't need to use this but obviously like I said you know death is a reality in everyone's lives and a lot of the time we have children to help through these things please let me know like I said if you have any questions or if you would like any additional resources in the comments I will definitely leave a link to the Dougie Center in the description but yeah thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video